I'm reading to you today from Animal Kind about love in the time of coronavirus. It's amazing what some people do for love or sex. In the mid 1990s, divers discovered ornate circular patterns on the seafloor, not underwater crop circles created by aliens, but nests created by the Japanese pufferfish. To attract a partner, a male puffer furiously flaps his fins and swims in a circular motion, carving the sandy sea bottom into precise peaks and valleys. Despite being only five inches long, over the course of some days, he uses his body to create elaborate circles that measure up to seven feet in diameter. For the pufferfish equivalent of chocolates and flowers, he decorates the edges with shells and coral fragments. And when a female happens by, he eagerly stirs up sand at the center of the circle, hoping to make his nest appear as cozy as possible. If impressed, the lady puffer hovers at the center of the nest and beckons the male closer, but the romance is short-lived. After depositing her eggs, the female speeds away, never to return, leaving the male to remain with the eggs until they hatch. Fortunately, his handiwork isn't entirely for show. The elaborate ridges that he has created with his fins can reduce current flow by 25% and protect those eggs. Female pufferfish aren't the only animals who expect males to step up their game. Standing up to 28 inches tall and weighing around 10 pounds, Adelie penguins have the classic sort of tuxedo look that you see in cartoons. They sport lush black and white coats and they have pink feet. And these energetic birds spend their entire lives on Earth's most frigid and now melting continent. Many species of penguins sail for warmer islands during the winter months, but nearly four million breeding pairs of a daily penguins stay put in colonies along the Antarctic coastline. Whereas humans consider the diamond the ultimate symbol of devotion, for a daily penguins, the humble pebble is the most important rock. In the barren Antarctic landscape, small rocks are very difficult to come by, and males spend days meticulously gathering them, sometimes stealing them from other males. When a male a daily has gathered the appropriate amount of pebbles, he digs a shallow depression in the ice and he uses them to line the outside edges. After spotting a female, he stands tall and he cackles, showing off his creation. If she's impressed, she exchanges bows with the male, who then scatters the pebbles into a comfortable nest for breeding. And in many cases, the Adelie penguins couple up and remain together for their entire lives. The elaborate ways in which animals attract mates are not that different from those of other species. Just as human couples hold hands to express their affection, African elephants intertwine their trunks with their soulmates' trunks. Densely packed with sensitive nerve endings, trunks contain over 40,000 muscles and they play a central role in elephant communication. An elephant will use her trunk to stroke a sick or grieving loved one, engage in a friendly game of trunk wrestling with a friend, and even gently entwine it with a partner's during courtship. And even the gaudier animal displays have parallels with those of humans. Is a human male who seeks to impress his date by picking her up in a sports car so dissimilar from a peacock who spreads his iridescent tail feathers and struts about hoping to win over a potential mate with the flashiest, most impressive display? In a study entitled The Effect of Conspicuous Consumption on Men's Testosterone Levels, it was reported how expensive bling affects them. When young males drove a sleek Porsche in downtown Montreal, tests showed that their testosterone levels were significantly higher 
than when puttering about in a beat-up sedan. Of course, there's always the risk of overdoing it. One study has shown, and it will not surprise human females, that male canaries with the most testosterone in their blood sang the loudest, but were seen as less attractive by females who preferred a soft, elegant chirp over a loud, toneless note. When luxury gifts aren't available, humans and other animals have to get resourceful, sometimes too resourceful. In late 1888, the famed Dutch post-impressionist painter Vincent van Gogh severed his left ear and delivered it to the object of his affection, a young girl working in a cafe that he often went to. The episode didn't work out well for him. A similar and more successful ritual takes place among large tropical seabirds called masked boobies. Male boobies offer gifts to potential mates such as small stones, but will also pluck out their own feathers and offer them as well. Love can hurt.